Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with WDSE and WRPT in Duluth, Minnesota. Today we are chatting with Tiffany Schleppergrell, Executive Director of the Project Care Free Clinic. Tiffany has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Talk about the ideas surrounding the establishment of this free clinic. So Project Care Free Clinic was established to help those people who are uninsured, which we all know those people need help, but also underinsured. So a lot of people have insurance, but they have a high deductible plan. And for basic medical care, they would not, they would avoid going in because they can't afford it. So we do a lot of basic, you know, sinus infections, um, cold, stuff like that. But then we also work in partnership with the hospitals to do lab services and x-rays. So our three most common conditions that we deal with are hypertension, diabetes, and mental illness. So hypertension and diabetes are very often associated with age. And if that goes un untreated because you cannot get the appropriate tests done, that could lead to really severe conditions that must be treated at a much higher cost. Yep, so one of the things that we do with our diabetic patients besides providing them with free insulin and testing materials is that we strongly encourage them to meet with our diabetic educators. And these are providers who are already providing that service up at the hospital and they come after working all day to spend time with the patients to help them get things under control and more of a management plan. And part of this has to do with behaviors because in diabetes in particular, since you're dealing with blood sugar, your diet and your level of exercise has a real connection to whether you will, have a, you will suffer um, some sort of an episode. And of course, even if you don't suffer a, a particular episode, lack of, of, uh, uh, of appropriate blood sugar levels creates physical harm over the long term. Right, a lot more serious conditions that require a lot more care that will be a lot more expensive for someone to deal with. So it's really important that they meet with their educators and get a treatment plan going so that they don't have to experience some of the more difficult aspects of the disease. Now you mentioned that, that you serve people who are uninsured and also underinsured. What is the, um, the ratio of people who are underinsured versus people who are uninsured, completely uninsured. So 60% don't have insurance and 40% do have some form of insurance. And what is the cause for people not having insurance? Is it, a, is it a matter of employment instability or lack of means? You know, that's a really good question. And one of the most surprising things uh, when we look at our numbers, 89% of the people that come to Project Care Free Clinic are working a full-time job. So there's a lot of employers who don't provide insurance. A lot of people ch choose to not buy the insurance because it's unaffordable. And um, another surprising thing is that the largest group that's coming in are people 55 plus because people in that age group have deductible, or you know, if they're paying their monthly premiums, it's 13, 15, 1600 dollars a month, and it's something they just can't afford. What's so interesting about these numbers, 89% of the people uh, coming in are working full-time jobs. These are people who want to be employed. Right. Right? And they and the money that they make is paying for their day-to-day -day needs. But as soon as a health care event occurs, they have no funds to pay for it. And so many people can't afford even the basics of health insurance if they don't get it through their job. Right, so many people are just kind of in, tr in transition between jobs or it's unaffordable. They own their own business. Um, one spouse isn't working, something like that. So they're kind of rolling the dice and then something happens and that's where we're filling that gap. In terms of the people who are uh, underinsured, is it mostly the high deductible issue? Yep, it's the high deductible, you know, there are some plans right now that have deductibles as high as $12,000. So it, it's basically like not having insurance at all. So how does this work? When somebody comes in, do they just show up and then they get whatever test? Do they make an appointment? How does so that we are a mostly walk-in clinic. We're open um, from 5.30 to 7.30 uh, in Hibbing. Uh, Mondays and Thursday nights, uh, Virginia, Minnesota on Wednesdays, and Grand Rapids on Tuesdays. We ask that people bring a photo ID. Uh, 
we don't ask that people provide bank statements or proof of anything. We're taking people at their word, which I think is a little different than some other programs work. A lot of people aren't able to produce all those documents when they're not feeling well. Um, you'll come in, you're greeted, you're asked to fill out some forms. You'll be put in a regular exam room. A nurse will take some vitals and talk to you. And then we have a wonderful group of doctors who come down after their regular work day and they'll come in and meet with you and decide what you need. If you need an x-ray or a lab, they'll send you up to the hospital and we'll get those results and we'll get some medication for you. If pain for medication is an issue, um, we do have some great relationships with pharmacies in town. And we also work with the Good RX program, which finds reduced drugs to work with people. Um, for diabetics, we've worked with Eli Lilly has a Lilly Cares program mm -hmm. that will pay for your insulin for a year. So um, another big aspect that we do at Project Care is advocating for the patient. So um, there are a lot of things that we can't do for people. And there are a lot of people who come in and we find out that something's happened that is a major deal. Uh, cancer, um, some kind of surgery is needed. And we really stick with the patient throughout the whole process and work together with patient financial services at the hospital, try to get them on some kind of insurance plan to get them to the next step. Very frequently when you go, anybody who's got walked into the hospital, they have to fill out a lot of forms and you get the impression that it's about the hospital being paid. And that's true, that's part of it. But in your case, it is really about following the, the patient and ensuring that you are assembling enough data for your work that you know who the patient is and what their treatment is and, and you can interact with your partner institutions. It's not really about billing. It's, it's, it's about trying to figure out how to do the right thing for this patient. Right, all of our forms have a reason and most of those reasons are to gather information about our patients. And um, the other part that we use a lot of that information is for filling out grants. And we are supported by the Northland Foundation here in Duluth, the Duluth Superior Community Foundation, um, the Hibbing Foundation, the Grand Rapids Foundation, uh, the Virginia Foundation, the United Way of 10,000 or 1,000 Lakes in Grand Rapids and uh, the United Way of Northeastern Minnesota. So they all like to know what they're spending their money on. And in terms of, of the work that you've done in, uh, to connect people to, for example, supplies of insulin, one of the big issues that we've seen recently is that the price of insulin has increased dramatically. So talk a little bit about how that has affected your clients and how you have tried to ameliorate that through these types of partnerships? So we've had some pretty, just like the other horror stories you hear on the news about insulin, we had a waitress who was sharing insulin with her sister. Um, we had patients who were just going without. And so it's really important, and we've been seen as a resource in the community too. We've had people get sent down to us from the hospital. Um, we'll provide them with insulin, but we'll also go to the next step with them, you know, not to be your total provider, but to hook you up with um, the Lily Cares program or get you some insurance to get you to the next steps. In terms of, of the uh, drugs and, others, uh, and other um, substances that you can um, uh, prescribe, um, we've seen in the last years an overprescription issue with particularly um, opioids and addictive, uh, addictive drugs. How do you manage that to ensure that people are not coming around and dr doing drug shopping? So we actually don't provide any opiates at our clinics and we have big signs up that let people know so word of mouth gets out that we don't have those either. We don't, anything serious like that will help you find another resource to go to. So uh, one of our, part of our mission statement is to connect with other places in the community that could help you. So we would refer you to someone that could help you with those kind of issues. And you serve how many patients annually? We had um, 1,800 patient contacts last year. So that means from visits to follow-up phone calls throughout Hibbing, Virginia, and Grand Rapids. And you also um, absorb about 3,000 volunteer hours annually. Oh, well. we have such excellent volunteers. So. Besides the doctors, nurses, people who do reception, 
we have we try to do active things in the community so we're in parades we're volunteering in other parts of the community so we just have we have a great group of volunteers now you also do free immunization we do we um, do free immunizations for children and adults inhibiting on at the first of the month we encourage people to call in and make a, an appointment to get those done and you also talked about how you help people navigate the insurance uh, processes, but you haven't yet talked about, about uh, sports physicals. Yeah, so we get really busy at back to school time. Um, we're real popular with college students. They know us down at the college. Kids who wanna do sports, we do sports physicals. Uh, the high school and middle school kids too, it gives them a great opportunity to get checked out to play sports because it's a $150 office visit that their parents don't have to pay. What is your budget? We run all three clinics on $150,000 a year. That's just incredible, $150,000. And what is that generally used for? If you, if you were to take that money and you were to say how that money is spent, how is that money spent? Our bi biggest expense is our staff. So mm -hmm. we have one full-time staff person, that's myself. And then each clinic has a site coordinator and they work around 20 hours a week and they do the scheduling with the volunteers and follow up with patients and make sure that people are showing up at the tests they're supposed to show up to. That's our biggest expense. We're so lucky we have free rent in Hibbing. We have free rent in Grand Rapids and a small rent in Virginia. The rest of our money goes towards supplies and medication. Tiffany Schleppergrell, thank you so much for sharing with us this wonderful, wonderful series of programs that you manage through Project Carefree Clinic, and thank you so much for your insights. Thank you.